When your tongue is in the correct position on the pellet during swallowing, and due to the strength of the deep skeletal tongue muscles, the maxilla moves forward and upward. It sounds simple and safe, right? But unfortunately, classic mewing can be unsafe. In this video, we will delve into the three most common reasons for feeling worse while mewing and find out why many people might not see the desired results or even experience a decline in facial appearance. And these three reasons may be as follows. Number one, short tongue tie. You can test yourself using these pictures. One, normal freedom of the tongue. Two, average anomaly. And three, severe degree of the anomaly. Ideally, with your mouth wide open, the tip of your tongue should freely and easily reach your palate. This might be slightly difficult to see in the first photo. It is clear that with a severe degree of this anomaly, you might not even be able to do mewing. However, with an average degree, the question remains open. I know people who have successfully practiced mewing, despite having this condition. Nonetheless, achieving desired results might not be guaranteed, and there could be a risk of overstraining the muscles of the hyoid bone. Moreover, it is essential to be aware of the presence of important nerve endings close to these muscles. Overstraining the muscles of the hyoid bone and the adjacent neck muscle can pose a risk of compressing these nerves, leading to possible tremors, mild panic attacks, and increased nervousness. Also, when the muscles of the hyoid bone, particularly the stylohyoid muscle and the digastric muscle, are tense, they will pull the lower jaw down and back, affecting its position. These two are in the picture. Imagine what happens to the position of the lower jaw when they are tense. As a result, when the lower jaw moves down and back in this manner, it sets off like a domino effect in a person's facial structure. The chewing muscles, which are attached at one end to the low jaw and the other end to the zygomatic bone, become overstrained. And as a result, the powerful masseters capable of withstanding a load of up to 400 kilograms and performing up to 1,400 contracting movements a day can simply pull your maxilla backward, exacerbating the situation and causing sagging cheeks. And all this is due to the insufficiently long freedom of the tongue, which, in addition to all of the above, indirectly affects the suboccipital muscles. The lower jaw is connected to the occipital bone through a complex muscle system. As you can see in the picture, this area has the first vertebrae atlas, through which vital nerves and vertebral arteries supplying the brain pass. They also pass under the deep muscles of the neck, which can be spasmodic. As a result, a person may experience symptoms of vascular dystonia, brain fog, as well as neck pain, headaches, and migraines. What is the way out of this situation? Definitely surgical cutting of the tongue tie. And this is what one of our readers sent to me. I cut my tongue tie with a laser. There are still cords. It takes a long time to heal. But my head went back a little. My neck stopped hurting. And most importantly, my tongue can now rest on my palate. However, for many people, mewing is safe. Even with an average degree of tongue tie anomaly, its degree can also vary. If you feel comfortable and good doing mewing with this condition, then you should not worry in this case. Number 2. To narrow palate. Here we have almost the same situation as in the case of a tongue tie. The reason remains the same overstraining of the muscles of the hyoid bone. Therefore, the domino pattern takes place. Overextension of the muscles of the hyoid bone results in the lower jaw moving back, leading to an overexertion of the chewing muscles, ultimately dragging the maxilla backwards. This can affect facial aesthetics, and as we discussed earlier, there are potential health implications to consider. That is why, to address a too narrow palate, Mike Mew advises the use of intraoral devices for expansion. Intraoral face pulling techniques can also be very helpful. Not to brag, but I've seen remarkable progress among students on our course, with some achieving a whooping 7 mm increase in pellet width in just 6 months. Number 3. Neuralgia. For any kind of neuralgia, mewing can be really dangerous. Many neurologists treat the consequences of the issue, but few of them are aware of the real biomechanical cause of the problem. Trigeminal neuralgia, for instance, can stem from the displacement of temporomandibular joints and discs where this crucial trigeminal nerve resides, causing pain all over the face. Most often this happens when there is a lack of dental height in the back of the jaw on molars. Often, but not always, associated with a deep bite. Therefore, in the case of neuralgia or even a tendency toward it, using a splint is indicated to provide support for the temporomandibular joints and discs. The upper jaw position can be influenced by the increased height of teeth on the lower jaw concept frequently used in orthotropics. Otherwise, you would have to support the maxillae with your tongue from the inside. But without proper tooth closure on molars, your lower jaw, in fact, will be dangling in the air and remain unstable, leading to potential muscle overstrain during mewing, which might trigger facial neuralgia. This can require weeks of treatment, and you might experience sagging cheeks. Therefore, in case of the slightest tendency to neuralgia, 
considering a splint and repositioning the maxilla is a wise choice. The same applies to the tendency towards thoracic or intercostal neuralgia. In fact, thoracic and intercostal neuralgia are common signs of imbalances at the skull level, the so-called level above. And so many body issues often manifest from top to bottom, the so-called descending dysfunctions but we will talk about this in other videos, how the structure of our skull affects the whole body down to the pelvis and feet. In this context, the so-called vagus nerve descends from the level of the skull the brain, close to the temporomandibular joint area, into the chest and abdominal cavity. Imbalances in the skull as bones and displacement of the temporomandibular joints can affect the entire posture, potentially compressing the vagus nerve along any part of its path, cervical, thoracic, ribs, but the root of the problem lies precisely in the position of the temporomandibular joints. To address this, using a splint to properly support the joints is essential, followed by working on the position of the facial bones and bones of the skull. And if you use incorrect mewing techniques or have a lack of dental height, then with the slightest muscle overstrain in any area of the posture, starting from the area of the lower jaw and masticatory muscles, you can worsen health due to compression of the insidious vagus nerve. Moreover, it is not for nothing that it is called wandering in Latin, since pains can shift to any part of the nerve moving from the ribs to the thoracic, occipital, or even facial areas. That is enough information for today. I really hope that all this information helps you achieve not only a great aesthetic result but also maintain good health, including your emotional well-being. Do mewing, and be not only beautiful but also healthy.